Okay, it says we're live. All right, we are live. And I'm sorry, I'm just checking to see if we're live. Don't get mad. Oh, okay. Don't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay, good. All right, so. Hello, everybody. All Welcome right. to Walk With History. Good evening. All right, so I'm going to get us kicked off here. Okay. I'm going to do the official intro. And then I'll start, we'll start doing this thing. All right, in three, two, one. Welcome to Talk With History. I'm your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you insights to our history-inspired travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Now today we don't have any guests, it's just Jen and I, but we're gonna talk about a video, our video that's actually coming out tomorrow. So the video that's coming out tomorrow is going to be on Band of Brothers. And so, Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we are talking about tonight? So when I went to England, I made a point to go to Alderborn, England. Right. And that was because that's where the Band of Brothers were from September to June right before D-Day, right before they jumped into France for D-Day. And they trained there, they lived there, and I just wanted to visit there, pay my respects, see it in person. It's a place that doesn't get a lot of attention when it comes to Band of Brothers. People are very interested in after yeah. D-Day. You know, some people are interested in stateside, right, um, where they were at uh, in training in Georgia and jump school. Sure. Yeah, um, because in the in the series now I didn't watch the full series with mm -hmm. you, but I kind of watched it on and off. I mean, they spend a good part of the series in training camp. Yeah, I mean, well, that's where they kind of form in the beginning. That's where they form their group yeah, and their, their cohesiveness. Their and it, it's jump school, so it's it's you get weeded out, right? Right, because this is this is before seals, before like yeah. the spec so, ops. So you see them kind of, and you as the audience kind of get to grow closer to them. Yes. And so why'd we choose Aldeborn? Well, I told you why. <laughs> okay, that's right. Sorry, I'm setting stuff up here. So we chose Aldeborn because this is where they train before they jump for D-Day. And they chose this area. I mean, people go out and intel, and of course, England was an ally, but they said the terrain was like France. Oh, okay. And so if they could practice jumping there, and that's what they did, they practiced jumps every day. If you could practice jumping there, you would be more ready for the terrain of France. Now I've heard <laughs> it wasn't really like the same oh, really? terrain. More than likely it was an area that could logistically hold them all. Yeah. That's probably the biggest reason why it was chosen. Yeah. Um, and you could get an airfield in there yep. and not have to. And it was far enough away, close enough to um, Normandy. And you'll see on our map of Walk With History, we show you what Aldeborn is in reference to Normandy. So they're kind of. They're not that far not as far that as far. the crow flies. So, and, and the other big reason that we chose Aldeborn is because you were in London. I was in London. Right. So yeah. you, so you were, how long did it take for you oh to get from London driving on the left, right? For an American <laughs> driving in, in England. Yes. <laughs> how long did it take you to drive out there? Um, an hour, a little over an hour. And it's very scary <laughs> because it's, as you know, the roads are narrow yeah. and I'm in a smaller car. And I, it was a stick. Yeah. Once and, you once you get off the main freeways out there, mm -hmm, yeah, I mean, these are tiny little English roads, right? And, You're driving yeah. through some farm country sometimes. And, and I'll be honest, I drove past it first, oh, really? and then I was like, I have to turn around, and you can't really turn around, right? <laughs> you know. And I was nervous, and you have to turn around with a stick. But I finally found my way back, and once I was parked, I was like, okay, I'm here. I'm gonna figure out where everything is from yeah. here. Yeah. So. So it was an hour drive. Um, and I didn't realize how long they actually spent in Aldemar. Yeah, so they leave America um, in the beginning of September. Yeah. It's... And they leave. And I, I think I talk about this a little because Dick Winters sees the Statue of Liberty as yeah. they leave in New York City. And they leave on a ship, the SS Samara. And uh, he wonders if he'll see it again. He wonders what's ahead of him. He's just very pensive and yeah. thinking about what's, you know, what the future holds for him. They get into Livermore, Liverpool, and um, 
about September 15th, and then they make it over to Aldeborn okay. closely after that. They kind of set so, up camp there. And so they're there September to June. Yeah, I mean, it's eight months. This is the longest time they're in one location. Yeah. And when you think about it, too, these huts that they're in, we'll talk about this yeah. later, they're in there through the winter, Ugh. and they're not insulated. Oh, my goodness. And this is England. <laughs> so yeah. you can think about, like, it was probably rough going, especially with the snow and all of that. But um, so that's, you know, the unknown. This is probably for a lot of these gentlemen the first time going overseas, sure. first time being in Europe. Well, and, and I didn't, right, so deployments nowadays mm-hmm. are, are still pretty long. Yeah. Right, upward, the average and on the Navy side is probably six months. You know, I'll say the Air Force, maybe it's like three or four months for you guys. I don't know. I, I, don't, I honestly don't. We I, always I don't give really Air Force know. a hard time. I mean, the Army, you know, sometimes their p- deployments can last up, at, you know, upwards of a year. Yeah. But here's these guys leaving the States. They spend eight, the first eight months of being gone for probably a couple of years. Yeah. Right. Possibly for some, for some of these folks. First eight months just sitting there. Just right? sitting the first there. Just training. month they probably spent mm-hmm. in transit. Then another eight months there. Mm-hmm. Then there was D Day, and there's everything after that. Everything after that, you know, all so the battles. These guys are gone for a couple of years. It, it's it's it it puts it a little bit more into perspective when you get to go there and you're like, they lived here. Yes, this for was their life. Year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, this was their life. And so when you think about it, too, um, they're leaving jobs, families behind, and they're there, yeah. just integrating into the town. A lot of the gentlemen said the town was very like a Hollywood set, yeah. which you would consider like a quintessential um, English, you know, town village. It's what it, it is. It still looks like that today. Yeah. So, so tell us, tell the you know, our listeners and our viewers kind of what what it was like to be there nowadays, because you you were there back just August, August, so a couple months ago. It was nice. Like it, it is a quintessential English town. It was a very nice town, very welcoming. I think people knew why I was there the minute I got out of my car. I mean, there's a um, a marker on the wall that marks yeah. um, the Crown Pub uh, for the 101st Airborne and it's Band of Brothers and yeah. it was their meeting place. And it was, even when I asked if I could film in there, they were very open and yes, please come in and film and yeah. look around. And so people were very nice, but it was, you can see how they came in and just kind of took over some of the bigger buildings sure because when you think about where the command post was yep i almost missed that place the maps are not very good for that area and it's right on that main road that i i i wasn't going to get back on but as i was leaving i saw it and i was able to stop and take a the video of it and our video will open up with me there but that's the command post and that when you think back on band of brothers yep that's where the major is, the colonel that, you know, when the NCOs come. And it's the, the mutiny scene. The mutiny so scene. So that's what everybody remembers. So when, yeah. I was, when I was looking it up, this was actually very easy to find. Yes. Because that mutiny scene, and if, again, if you remember back to the Band of Brothers, you know, series, if you watch the series, this is when the NCOs, the non-commissioned officers, mm-hmm. they kind of get together and they're like, listen, we can't follow or whatever the so Bell. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to follow um, David Schwimmer's David character. character. So, so they were like, okay, we're all going to write this. We're going to do this together. We're in it together. We're, we're in it together because they they knew that mm-hmm. that I think he was still Captain Winters at the time. I don't even, I don't even think, I, no, he he's captain, not captain he's yet. Lieutenant. Yeah, he's a lieutenant um, still. But uh, so that's where they're getting yelled at. Mm-hmm. And that's where the colonel the colonel he basically says okay you you're out of my you're out of my company yep you you're getting demoted yeah the rest of you you guys are lucky that we're on the eve of mm-hmm. like d-day of of the biggest launch in military history yes. you know, so it's a big big deal but that's where the command post was and yes. we show that in the video tomorrow. and people might wonder like why is he so mean oh sorry siri yeah people probably are wondering oh, why is he so mean if this is really what's happening why isn't he listening to them and honestly, from an officer perspective, you can't let people think this is the way to do business, that this is OK. Yeah. It's OK to write a letter and, yeah, I'll listen to you and we're going to change it. So that's why he does that. Now, granted, he is listening to his men because we do know that he will replace Sorbel. He'll replace him yeah. and yeah. he will move Winters into a more leadership well, and, role. And that's where he... And yeah. it's the clearest signal there. Yes. That, like, I think he but you have can't... a scene later where he's talking to his XO or something mm-hmm. like that. And they're like, yeah, he's lost. Yeah. But yeah. you but you can't let that kind of 
way of communication right. become the norm. Right. And that's why he is adamant about what he the reprimands that he gives in that moment. But that is at the manor house. Yeah. So that's the first place we open up with. And a lot of that angst between David Schwimmer's character and Winter's character, that's all happening in Aldeborn when he puts him up for court martial. Yep. That's all happening in, in Aldeborn. So again, eight months they're there, they're practicing, they're jumping. And th this in that band of brothers, that's kind of that setting where they're flying over the village. And I show you kind of what the airfield looked like there from in the bar. They have a sketch of the airfield there. Um, but that's why I wanted to go there. Yeah. I kind of wanted to be there. And it really, you know, like I said, it resonated to walk around and see where the officer's mess was, where the enlisted mess was, where the, the two bars, the crown bar of the enlisted hung out, the blue bar where the officers hung out. Um, and then to go walk around um, and give, and for Dick Winters, give yeah. him some of my focus um, from his memoir. He had written some personal stuff about his experience with the, the Barnes family there. And so I wanted to pay my respects to them. Yeah. So that's and, another and that's, and that's part of the video. When you see the video tomorrow, if you're watching tonight, you know, tune in, subscribe, and and uh, and watch the video tomorrow because it's it's really good. And we actually kind of did some some homework hunting on YouTube. This is of what we could find. This is one of the better Band of Brothers kind of all the born focused um, videos that, that'll be out there. But walk us through some of the places in town that you were able to visit. Cause I know like you mentioned the bar and mm -hmm. you got to, you got to kind of go in there a couple of the bars. Um, now there was some scenes from the bars in the movie. So in the movie they show the crown bar in the, in the, in the show, I think they show the blue boar. Now I didn't get to go into the blue boar. It was closed. That's where the officers yeah. would hang out. And then the crown bar where I got to go inside and film and show you everything that's on the wall, that was probably where the enlisted hung out. Okay. And then I went to High Point. Is it High Point? Um, that's where the officer's mess was. So when the officers are all stationed there, they're all put in one High Town, High Town Manor, yep. High Town House. They're all put in one house, but they're given the option. If you can find accommodations out in town, if you'd like to be with a family, if a family will put you up, you're more than welcome. And honestly, you and I both know when you're spending 24 seven with a group of people, yeah. anytime you can take a break and have some normalcy to be on your own, you're going to take, take them up on that opportunity. Yeah. And that's what happens with Dick Winters. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to find that high town, house where all the officers were in the beginning the the blue boar the crown in but i was able to find the barnes house yeah where when dick winters is taken in uh he's he him and for uh, lieutenant harry welsh are both taken in by the barnes family they offer to take in two officers as long as one of them is dick winters and i'll tell you more about why they were adamant like one of them had to be dick winters um they they shared a room but it's the the window right above the cafe and I show you that. Um, yeah, the post office, I think. Yeah, it's a post, like office, post office cafe. There. But at the cafe sign is the window right above it. Yeah. And I actually went inside. It's a nice little store. You know, so if you're in England, <laughs> those stores are everything. They're the post office. Yeah. They're the grocery store. Like, if you need to do anything in town, you go to that store to do it. Yeah. Um, and so that's probably what the Barnes family was for the, the city. Yeah. They probably were that kind of... Um, commerce for that's for the people there sure. um and so the, and so one of the places i really wanted to find though and i did find it was the field that's right where the huts were so i think i say it nice and huts yeah i think it's nice and huts. nice and huts so these are the huts that they built for the men they're made out of corrugated metal rounded and then they put like the bunks in there yeah you can if for anybody who's watched war movies or even seen the band of brothers mm -hmm. right you can kind of picture them they really are that just kind of domed corrugated yeah. metal easy to make right easy to make basic op opening at the front yes right and there's a couple maybe a row of them or something like that and i think dirt floor yeah and very basic so i wanted to find that field because that's where they did most of their drilling yep. you know marching around there's pictures in the we, pictures we of pictures. them we so show, i could we show pictures stand there yeah mm -hmm. and there was a, a dig that was done some archaeologists did a dig there of the dirt of the floors of these huts to find artifacts and they yep. did they found a ton of them and we, we showed in the video just a, 
what their lives were like and what they discarded. Yeah. What people discarded in the 40s is is funny how people just throw things yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, I'm done with this. Yeah, just throw it off to, <laughs> the, it throw off it off to the side there. Um, so, but there is some quotes like, so I think it's Mackie. Uh, malarkey malarkey when he first sees the dome it's he said there's a pot belly stove uh in the inside and then the honey pots the bathrooms <laughs> were right on the outside and i'm reminding you this is september yeah. to june yeah so freezing cold weather and then williams wooden uh said that they were double deck bunks on both sides and when they first got in there they were exhausted they had traveled all night they had they were given like mattress covers and they had to fill their mattresses with straw. So there was like a pile of straw. You filled your mattress and you threw it on a bunk and you went to sleep. And he said he was so tired. He just, wow. but that's what they had. Yeah. Can you imagine like, there you go Yeah. for the next eight months. Eight, that's eight months, what you're going to be yeah. sleeping on that, that straw mattress. So I can imagine if you're given the opportunity to go into someone's home sure. and have a real bed, yeah. you're going to take them like up a, on a that. real room. It's mm -hmm. probably a little bit warmer in a house yeah. than it is in these Neeson huts. Yeah. And it was cool, too. So one of the things that we show in the video that I was able to find, again, I think partly because Band of Brothers would, became so popular when the show came out, when the book came out, um, I'm able to, to find, like, old schematics. and Yeah, that was neat. That was, that was really neat. And I even saw online, and I didn't put it in the video, but there's one Nissen hut, Nissen hut left. They actually moved it and because someone was using it as, like, a workshop mm -hmm. or they were staying in it or something like yes. that. But you can find pictures of this stuff. So it's, it's really neat. And all the things that they found at this dig. So they did like an archaeological kind of style dig. Now, obviously, it wasn't, they didn't have to dig deep. Yeah. But um, they still, they went out there and they kind of laid it out and they, they cut everything up. And um, they were very kind of methodical about it. Mm -hmm. And we show some pictures of some of the things that they find, whether it's, you know, a parachute handle or. They found some dog tags and they found some a pomade can yeah, a pomade can to do the pompadours and, but you can i could see there where the dig was because it was kind of more weedy right where the weeds had kind of grown in yeah it's a soccer field now it, the dig was only two or three years ago it yeah was like, it was 2019 yeah so that's how recent the, the study was some of the pictures that i show but if you can walk out there it was on farm lane i kind of show you the two yep. roads to get there but it's a it's a soccer field you can stand there you yeah. can stand right where easy company stood and yeah and, and it's it's neat too because someone from work that i that i work with actually just did like a full-blown official band of brothers tour right it took two or three weeks mm -hmm. and went all over europe doing visiting all these Right, these various Band of Brothers spots, and Aldeborn was one of the places that, yeah, that they, he went. They usually start there. Yeah, so so they so they went there, and so I got to kind of talk to him about it, and you know, and, and we obviously you were out there, I didn't mm -hmm. get to go, um, but it was really cool to just kind of immerse myself when I was editing this video, kind of in that in that whole thing. And one of the things that I like the, the the clip that I was actually my favorite that I added in was the officers in the bar and they're <laughs> shooting darts. And if you ever remember the show, right, it's it's one of the officers there, he's like shooting darts. So he's, he's doing this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then they start making bets. He's like, oh no, I'm not so good, this, that, and the other. He's like, oh, okay, well let's, you know, let's bet a, a you know, I thought it was a carton of cigarettes yes. or something like that. Oh, let's, let's make it two. So he lines up his shot and then his friend, his friend says, well, Lieutenant, are you gonna be shooting darts left-handed all night? Because you're right-handed. He's like. Oh, what would I do without you? And he turns <laughs> right-handed and he makes a shot right away. So that was just fun. It's it's a good way of seeing those clips. I mean, those guys actually, that's what they did while they were there. Sure. I mean, you have all months. this time. You're getting paid. Yeah. And you have this time and you're getting ready. That's the kind of, what I really appreciated about that, and we'll get into what Dick Winter says too, this is really when you're forming your bonds right. with your people. Yeah because you're spending 24 seven with them. You're hanging out with them. You're laughing with them. You're drinking with them. Yeah, I mean, that's your family for a you know, time. So this is where these strong shared hardships, shared bonds will come from yeah. that will be instrumental in battle. Right. And I think they show that well because you know you, you play well together, you have fun together, um, and now you're gonna go out and you know fight together. Right. So I think that was a very cool part. Yeah, that was is very neat. Now, one of the last things that you visited while you were there actually was the the church. Mm -hmm. It was like the town St. Michael's mm -hmm. Church Saint Michael's. and the cemetery that was right next to that. So, what was what was significant about that? So, you know, Stephen Ambrose wrote Brand of Brothers, and after he wrote it, 
this is when this group of men kind of became more, I wouldn't say popular, but into the public sphere sure. a little bit more. And people wanted to know more about each of them and their lives. And so Dick Winters wrote a memoir in 2006. And his memoir was Beyond Band of Brothers, the war memoirs, the war memoirs of Major Dick Winters. And in that memoir, he talks about Aldeborn and he talks about being it being the most formative and development time of his career. And he credits that with the time he spent with the Barnes family yeah. because it gave him time to prepare to lead these men. And he gave him the downtime to focus on what they were defending yeah. and what way of, you know, what did this mean? What did their sacrifice mean? So Dick Winters, when he first gets to Alderborn, he goes to church and he said he doesn't even remember the sermon. He just wanted to be alone in a place and think and reflect on what was to come, right? Because like he's looking at the Statue of Liberty. I think he's very reflective, and we can talk more about this as officers, this kind of responsibility you feel, sure. right? And so he goes to church. He comes out of the church. I show you the bench he sits on. He goes over to the cemetery, and he sits on a bench, and he notices a couple tending to a grave. And that couple comes over and talks with him. Well, they're the Barnes family, the... um. I don't know. It's Francis Barnes is the husband. Husband. I think the wife is Louise. Louisa. Yeah, we, I tried to. It, um, it was hard to see. It's on hard the to find her name. You spelled it out, and it was yeah. like it was almost like Louis. Yeah. Instead of Louise, but it's not kinda, quite sure. Kinda close enough. But so they're tending to their son Leonard's grave, and their son died in the Battle of Britain, um, and he, so just um, it was about a year. Before a year that. before that happened, yeah. and. So they strike up a conversation and they offer, they had offered their home to take in two officers, but meeting Dick Winters and talking to Dick Winters, something resonated with them that they said they'll open their home to two officers as long as one of them was Dick Winters. Yeah. And Dick Winters took him up on that. And he just, he just loved being with the Barnes family. He said like they would come to his room at night and knock on the door and say, the news is coming on. He'd go downstairs and have tea with them and listen to the news and read the newspaper, and he just felt like a very normal family life. And I think when you're so immersed in the military and the military way of life, to hold on to some normalcy yeah. somewhere, I we can understand what that means. Yeah, and I think one of the, the good things that you brought up too was, and I think you said that he mentioned this in his memoirs, was you know kind of seeing them and being with a family that's still grieving mm -hmm. the loss of their son, you know, a year after the fact, eighteen months after the fact. You know, it really resonated with him when he was writing these letters, you know, yes. or, or he would have to fill out the forms to mm -hmm. notify, you know, the families of the men that eventually, you know, died that that served under him. That's your responsibility. And so he knew what kind of impact those things would have on a family and what that would look like to live with that kind of grief and that kind of loss yeah. because he was experiencing it with the Barnes family as they were going through it. So... It, it was a, a education for him. And I just, I really appreciated that. And so I think I, I, I do talk about it in the video, what it means when you're an officer and Scott, you're an officer. I was yeah. an officer and, you know, leading people and we, I mean, combat officer. So leading people into situations where it can be very dangerous and life and death, like you have to be very, competent and yeah. sure of what you're doing you have to know what you're fighting for you have to understand your tactics yeah. you have to understand your decision making you have to be the kind of person who makes a decision and goes with it you can't be wishy-washy you have to instill a lot of faith in your people and dick winters was that person and i think band of brothers does a good job of showing it sometimes where he's not sure yeah. and he doesn't know but he can't he, that can never seep in Right. You always have to be well, this pillar. And, and, and really what it comes down to is as as a leader. Right. And I think you mm -hmm. like you said, they, they, he shows it well on the show. But as a leader, right. And as someone I've been in for, oh, my goodness, creeping up on 18, 20 years now, <laughs> um, longer than, than I care to admit. 
but but I, you know I've had and I've never been you know in in combat right I've been on on the ships and we've done mm-hmm. I've done deployments and been in situations where you're you're kind of getting close to GQ so I've I've been close to those situations but nothing general quarters you know yeah um <laughs> nothing like nothing ever like that never never in the line of fire or anything mm-hmm. um, personally but one of the things as a leader especially as an officer when you're when you're leading those men is if and I think that's why they spent so much time on training camp and then in Aldeborn was so formative for mm-hmm. probably continued to be formative for the, for the unit, because if you can show the people that are serving underneath you that you are there for them, yes. for their safety, for their betterment, to make sure that they make it out the other side or that you will do everything in your power to make it out for mm-hmm. them to make it out the other side, then they know even in the times where you hesitate that the decision that you do make, you're making the bet, you know, f- the best call for them. Yes, they will trust you. Yes, and and that's really what it comes through. It's not that you can't show hesitation, that you can't show weakness, yeah. because the the one thing that that is good, and what was amazing to me that about the Barnes family and and Major Winters saying how formative it was for him, when I was looking up stuff about Dick Major Dick Winters, there was stuff all over the internet about I his know. leadership and all the things that he does. And I think part of it, again, is because of the show and that you can pull examples. But think about that. Someone who's lauded as this like exemplary leader in World War II and this family, mm-hmm. right, in this tiny little English town had a major impact on, on how he handled himself and how he viewed leading these men during the war. Yeah, it's re- It was really... It didn't really sink in with me until I kind of edited the video for numerous hours <laughs> and and then and then watched it a couple times and really realized like, man, this family had an impact on this amazing man. I think Major Dick Winters passed away in twenty eleven. Yes, he did. Um, but some of the leadership lessons that you get from him is just absolutely incredible. Exactly. And I love uh, you open <sighs> with the quote. Oh, you close with that quote when yeah. his uh, his grandson asked him if he was a hero and he goes, no, but I serve with heroes. And I just he's so humble. Yeah. And I think the best, to my opinion, the best officers are. Absolutely. Because I think you you really are your people. It's not yeah. you. You're yeah. you're your people. And like you said, if you're with your men the whole time. You do the runs with them. You're yep. carrying a weapon with them. Everything you've a- you ask them to do, you can do or right. you do beside them. That's when you start to instill this this trust. You know, the, he's not she he or she's not asking us to do something that they wouldn't do themselves. Right. Not putting us in harm's way without mission right. or you know weighing all the options. And I just love that he said that. Because it, to me, he still doesn't see himself as a hero. He sees the people he led as heroes. And they really um, answered the call. Yeah. Dick Winters is from Pennsylvania. Is he really? Close to Penn State. Oh, no way. Yeah, he had a farm in Hershey, PA. Oh, my gosh. And he's actually buried not too far from Penn State. And if you know me, you know my undergrad is oh, wow. from Penn State. Yeah. So just, again, something it just really resonated with me. So that's why I went to that cemetery and sat on that bench and kind of wanted to get the perspective of Dick Winters in that moment. Now the Barnes family has since passed away and they are buried in that cemetery, not far from their son. And Dick Winters had gone back later in life and for a tour, a band of brothers tour. And he had excused himself from the tour and went over to the grave and left flowers for them. Oh, cool. So that's why I personally wanted to visit them as well because yeah. of what they meant to him and because of what he means to me, I wanted to come kind of full circle and yeah. pay, my, pay my respects to them. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a really cool, um, it, it, was, it was a fun one to, to make and it was an important one. We've actually been anxiously awaiting kind of making this mm-hmm. particular video and we were saving it for closer to veterans day mm-hmm. uh, so for the veterans out there thank you for your service yes um, thank you for your service and, and this this video is kind of a little bit in memory of a, a well-known and lauded you know veteran yeah um so it, it was it was pretty cool um again highly encourage you if you've watched this or if you tuned in or if you're watching this later um the video is going to go live, you know, tomorrow. 
um, at, at 4 p.m. So that's every Wednesday. We try to get a, get a video out to you guys. So, And if you're listening to this podcast later, it's on there waiting for you. Yes, it is on there waiting for you. It's already, it's already been published because this podcast is going to come out the Monday after the, uh, the, Monday after the, the video. So for those listening, thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast. And please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. And especially if you think that today's topic, Band of Brothers and Major Dick Winters, would interest a friend. Shoot them a text and tell them to look up Talk With History because we rely on you, our community, to grow. And we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Well, I didn't see too many folks in the chat this time around. I didn't either. That's okay. We had more last time. We had a ton last time. We had a ton and we missed them. So we really didn't want to miss anybody this time. That's right. So hopefully we didn't miss anyone. We're just uh, not getting any chat. That's okay. This is kind of a, for for those who are still on. We really appreciate you guys jumping on and joining us. Yes, um, thank you. And because this was, we kind of threw this together last minute because one, we needed to record this podcast. We're getting we're getting ready to do a little trip, um, and we need to get it recorded. Yeah, so, uh, we're not missing chat. Can somebody say something just to make sure that this is working? I'm not sure. Because I don't, I want to make sure we're not missing anybody. No, it's all there. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you for coming on. I mean, this is November first, and when I when we hit November first, I always think of Veterans Day, yeah. and so this was important for us to wait to do this video. It's closer to Veterans Day, it just means a lot um, to have it to have it close to November eleventh, and to do and talk about Dick Winters. So. Look for it tomorrow. We're, I'm really proud of it. I uh, found the locations. It was a beautiful day in Aldeborn that day. Yeah, it was gorgeous. And Crystal, it's okay if you're not uh, chatty, but we, we appreciate uh, thank you, you jumping in. At and, least we know it works. Chatting. That's all that matters. So that was actually very helpful, let you letting us know. So we appreciate that, Crystal. Yes. But um, watch the video. It was a cool town. I can see why they start there so the stephen ambrose band yeah. of brothers tour does it start there we'll start there yeah. and like i said you're close to france normandy so i can see if you probably take a ferry across mm, okay. um to normandy and um do all that and stuff. do do all do all that stuff yeah the spread out. I, I told i told tom <laughs> at work that he needs to uh i was like i keep asking him, tom where's my slideshow <laughs> I, need, I need a slideshow for all the stuff but again for those of us for those of you guys joining us we're going to sign off yeah. Um, thank you again for, for joining us. And maybe this is something that we can do more in the future is Tuesday night. We kind of preview the Wednesday video. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll think about it. Yeah. Um, but we're going to try to start doing more of these, these podcast live streams, um, to, to get it out there and for, to engage with you guys a little bit more, um, and to share our walks with history. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Thank you. All right. We'll see you later. <laughs>